Hey folks, this is Andrew Kloster, Colorado Field Advocate with Earthworks, and over the next five or so minutes, I'm going to quickly run through some of the um, main takeaways updates from our most recent round of field work in the Front Range in September. Um, as always, quick primer for those who may not have been tuning in um, to prior presentations this year. Um, Earthworks, when we conduct field work, we use optical gas imaging cameras or OGI cameras to detect um, pollutants from oil and gas facilities that are invisible to the naked eye. Um, and when we're talking about oil and gas facilities, that's primarily methane and volatile organic compounds. And you can actually see on the title slide here, um, uh, an example of what this looks like. So this GIF um, transitions from a naked eye view, a digital photo to um, a clip from our OGI camera showing pollutants coming off of the top of that produced water tank there. Um, and for those who have been tuning in and following along this year, you should recognize this site. This is the Prospect Energy Krauss site just north of Port Collins. We've highlighted it um, a few times this year as a chronic polluter. Um, and unfortunately, we're gonna have to continue to highlight it because as you can see from this footage from September 2nd, um, we've identified a new leak on this site. This is the fourth such leak in nine months. Um, and as of this recording, we are still waiting, um, we filed a new complaint, waiting for this leak to be corrected. And while we wait, the um, community members who live nearby are being exposed to um, this pollution and having to suffer the health um, impacts of being exposed to this pollution. Um, so I'm, I'm starting with this, uh, this site, this slide, um, because it's really indicative, this ordeal um, that we've been going through to get this one site, the pollution on this one site mitigated um, and stopped really permanently is indicative of what I want to kind of convey with this presentation, the main takeaway, which is the fact that despite the um, marathon rulemakings that we have endured in Colorado since the passage of SB 181, um, and despite the fact that the Polis administration and the state have made um, very public commitments to um, uh, tackling climate change through the um, greenhouse gas roadmap, and especially, you know, in particular, um, have promised really significant reductions in emissions from the oil and gas sector, um, we are not seeing um, really any substantive impact from these uh, commitments rules and regulations that have been adopted. Um, our field work and the reality on the ground that our field work demonstrates is um, really showing the fact that the health and climate harming pollution from the oil and gas industry at this moment is continuing um, unabated. There's really been no, no impact, um, no reduction in harm that has occurred, at least as far as we can see. And I'm going to really sort of drill into this with a couple of visuals I'm gonna share. Um, most significantly, I'll say, and probably the, you know, of main priority to a lot of people in the front range, a lot of folks in the front range is um, the fact that we continue to permit new um, wells, new pads to be fracked. Um, and for those who are not familiar um, drilling and fracking phase of a well pad's life is probably the most um, pollution heavy phase of the entire well's life cycle. And there's a lot of new fracking, um, not a lot of new pads being fracked in the front range right now. One of them is this Cub Creek Energy Night Pad, which we've also highlighted before. And you can see um, in the footage here taken on September 9th, huge plume of pollution coming up from behind the sound wall. This is also another um, view on the um, night pad. Uh, this is actually from the very next day on September 10th. And this photo and video were both taken from a home that is less than 600 feet um, from this pad. But you'll see in this GIF as well, huge amount of pollution coming up from behind the sound wall. Um, this is a different fracking pad up a little bit further east in Weld County. This is the Noble Energy Independence Pad. Um, but the story is the same huge amounts of pollution coming from behind the sound wall drifting up into the atmosphere. And then as a point of comparison, um, this is the extraction interchange pad B in Broomfield, Colorado. And this photo and footage were actually taken in 2019 prior to all of these rules, all of these promises um, in terms of the climate and reducing harm from this um, industry from the current administration. And you'll see in this footage um, a 
significant amount of pollution coming from behind the sound wall. But I'm including this here because if I removed the text from this GIF and I removed the text from this slide and just presented this along with the other two pads that I just went through, um, you would be none the wiser as to the fact that this was actually taken two years ago. And again, taken two years ago before all of these changes have occurred and these promises have been made in terms of reducing the impact of this industry, or at least the worst impacts. Um, but again, what we're seeing in our field work, unfortunately, um, and in comparison to the past, is that very little, if anything, has changed. Fracking is still a pollution heavy, a pollu intensive operation. Um, and all of the new rules and regulations have done very little to mitigate the pollution that is occurring um, during fracking on all of these new pads in the front range. Switching gears a bit, but with the same theme, um, we now have in Colorado a prohibition on routine venting. Um, unfortunately, this prohibition seems to be more wishful thinking than reality, at least um, from what we can tell with field work, because when we are out looking at tanks, um, we are frequently finding venting of all sorts, whether it's because of maintenance, leaks, um, permitting thresholds. Um, regardless, it doesn't take too long if you're out with a OGI camera in the front range or in any part of Colorado really to find venting tanks. Um, this is Prospect Energy's Community Central tank battery. It's not too far from the um, site that I started the presentation with. And you can see in the GIF um, pollution venting from uh, the hatch, the thief hatch on top of the tank there. This is another tank, KP Kaufman tank in Weld County, huge amount of pollution coming off of this tank. And then another tank, um, this is Noble Energy's um, Marie D413 tank. You can see in the GIF um, venting from the hatch again on this tank. Um, Again, just the frequency with which we continue to find venting scenarios, venting emissions from tanks, suggests that either um, this prohibition we have on routine venting is not being effectively enforced, or um, someone doesn't understand the definition of routine in uh, prohibiting routine venting. Because uh, if anything, venting is very routine still in Colorado. And then finally, um, just to close things out, another example of ways in which some of these are new rules and regulations are unfortunately falling short is the fact that we also have um, a prohibition on routine flaring um, in the state of Colorado. However, when we are out looking at sites, looking at combustors specifically on sites, it is not uncommon for us to see um, things like this. And what we are seeing in this GIF, this is the Crestone Peak um, Wandell C unit site in uh, Firestone. What you're seeing in this GIF though, as it pans up is emissions that are not being combusted. This is methane, this is um, gas that's not being combusted in these combustors and is therefore just uh, accumulating and uh, it, uh, going up into the atmosphere. Um, this is either because these combustors are not operating as efficiently as they should be, or they're malfunctioning um, but regardless, the point is we see this all the time. This is not an uncommon sight for us to see and for us to film when we're out looking at combustors in Colorado, which raises a lot of questions as to what precisely is being achieved by our um, prohibition on routine flaring um, if we have pollution from uncombusted emissions that is occurring as frequently as our field work would suggest. So that is all I have to share for today. Um, but we'll have plenty more to share in the future. And I just, again, want to reiterate, want you all to understand the fact that um, as we conduct our field work, we are um, hoping to um, ground truth and test um, these regulations and these rules as they come into effect. And thus far, um, our conclusion can only be the fact that um, things have not changed significantly enough um, and we have plenty, plenty of work still to do.